Welcome to Reader Syndicate 3.0, the next evolution of the look into counterculture that is canon. My name is Matthew, owner of Riot Seeds, and this started as a one-man mission for strain history and breeding science. Over time, it's evolved into something bigger, better, and more of a team effort. We will be joined by members of the Can Illuminati and other friends throughout the seasons to hear their takes on grow techniques, breeding science, strain history, and more. Our mission is to combat the narrative that corporate cannabis and seed posers are obfuscating for their own financial benefit. Welcome to the underground. We are the Syndicate. The videos on this channel, The Breeder Syndicate 3.0, are compliant with YouTube policies and does not depict or promote any sales or distribution of any substances. These videos do not violate any YouTube community guidelines and is intended to educate the public about historical and scientific aspects of hemp plants. This video does not promote, idolize, nor glorify any illegal activities or unsafe consumption of regulated substances. We are not doctors or lawyers. This should be super obvious. With that said, some people need to be reminded about this. Do not take anything we say as medical or legal advice of any sort. We are just the best at what we do. Live with it. All content is copyright of the Breeder Syndicate 3.0, 2024, Section 107 of the Fair Use Act. Thank you for your support. All right, welcome to Breeder Syndicate. I'm Matthew, and today I'm here with Yoni, the CEO of Plant Cell Technology. If that is that correct? That's correct. All right, and um, the other day I, I kind of stumbled onto you through uh, a mutual friend, and they were showing that you're doing uh, embryonic rescue on seeds, which fascinates me, all the breeders out there, yeah. um, people that are just genuinely interested in seed collecting. And so I went in and it looked like you guys were competently doing embryonic rescue, which is something I've not seen yet displayed, shown, really like like you guys did. Um, so it fascinated me and I wanted to reach out. So here we are. Um, tell me a little bit about your company and how it got started. Tell me about yourself. Yeah, so so plant cell technology. Well, first off, Matt, it's great to be here, and uh, I love that you Thanks stumbled coming, on man. our 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 video. You know, being competent is uh, is is the baseline for what we expect. <laughs> yeah, um, right? we it's it's important to be professional, and and more importantly, to to give people the resources and the opportunity to watch. Yeah, right. A lot of science is hidden behind closed doors, and uh, I think part of our mission is to democratize <laughs> tissue culture and make this more accessible to the world. Yeah. So, um, on that point. You know, plant cell technology started about 30 years ago, okay. and the the origin story that a lot of people don't know is we actually started as a toy company, and the oh, whole idea, yeah. yeah, it's called Pet Plant. So the whole idea was you could get, you know, three different test tubes filled with gel, and you'd get different seeds. So you would have a corn seed, you would have a calea seed, and you would have a tomato seed. And yeah. kids would be able to watch the plants grow in, in the test tube, for example, yeah. um, in the gel, and you know, it's a fun, it's a fun toy. This is like around the time pet rock was a thing, you know, pet everything, yeah. uh, space monkeys or water monkeys, whatever you would call them. Um, there was one problem with this toy is that the gel kept getting contaminated. Yeah. So we developed plant preservative mixture, which mm -hmm. is the only EPA approved solution that, you know, protects the plants, doesn't hurt the plants, but keeps bacteria and fungus outside of your outside of your cultures. Sure. Um, and that's really where, that's really what got us our foot in the door into the industry. So fast forward 30 years later, PPM is, is widely used across the industry. Yeah. It's an industry standard for, for most labs and internationally, especially. But what we wanted to do is, is figure out a way to bridge the gap between your bioengineers, you know, your, your highly educated scientists and people that wanted to get into the space, but might not have access. So we started developing a series of videos, education classes to show people what we did in the lab. You know, what's the R&D that we're doing behind those doors? What are the products that we're using to be successful? And mm -hmm. not only are we going to provide you with those products, but we're going to teach you how to use them. And, you know, while we do service the largest commercial tissue culture labs in the world, they know exactly what they're buying. We thought that it's important to create more education in this space, um, more videos, more content, and also break it down for people that weren't necessarily um, learning from the scientific journals and papers that they either might not have access to or might not understand. Yeah. Um, and I very much believe that plant tissue culture is a trade skill, 
right? Being able to work in a lab, being able to be successful and, and mitigate contamination. Uh, being Absolutely. a successful lab technician is something that we should be training more people in and giving more people yeah. the opportunity because this is a very important skill. And, and as I like to tell people, at least with, with cannabis hemp specifically, we're only in the second or third inning of the ball game right now. And the research is flooding in, the opportunities are expanding and, and we're just, we're seeing an exciting wave now of energy that people aren't just questioning whether or not TC is good for them, but they're now trying to figure out how to do it for themselves. So that yeah. was a, a little long monologue of how we got started, but we really you know, started from just a product company. And now I, I try to think of us as a, a collective or an all-in-one shop for plant tissue culture with education, consulting, products, and support. And, and we have this community that we've built and hopefully continue to build that now you're a part of. So thanks for, yeah. thanks for joining our video and hopefully it's the <laughs> yeah, first <dude>. many. <clears throat> yeah, it was, it was smart. And, and I, I don't usually get like motivated to hit people up. <laughs> you two, I, I really don't. It, it, it was awesome. And it was well done. First of many. Yeah. First yeah, of many. Flat. And it's all free. That's the, that's the beautiful yeah. part, right? People, people, there's a lot of paywalls behind this information or people just don't want to talk about it, but yeah, we're here to tell you as much as we can. Right. Yeah, uh, some things are proprietary, obviously, but obviously. Um, something like when it comes to embryo rescue, uh, that's a skill that I think growers especially will be excited to learn about. Because, I mean, how many seeds have you thrown out in your lifetime? My God, so many. There's so we, like between me and a few other breeders, we have a, a large stock of some of the oldest seeds in, in cannabis history, just sitting and waiting, not doing Believe anything it. in fridges, just waiting yeah. for people that have the skill to do this and just just... And so many people have pretended to, we'll give them to them and nothing comes from it ever. So yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. So, I mean, what we can do with embryo rescue while, while we're not guaranteeing a hundred percent results, you know, Office, no, yeah. nothing in science yeah. is ever a hundred percent. Um, but if you do have old seeds, I mean, we, we've worked with seeds that are 30, 40 years old and we've been able yeah. to germinate them. Um, so yeah, I can I can just dive right into embryo rescue if yeah, you want. Yeah, please, please do. Uh, you know, at, at its core, um, you know, majority of growers will like to pop seeds, uh, pheno hunt, look for new strains. One yeah. of the big and common issues with popping seeds is some of them just won't work. Right? Yeah, they're not yeah. going to germinate, and people throw them out. Fortunately, uh, due to plant tissue culture and some of the skills. Uh, developed in embryo rescue. This is actually, I want to give credit to, to Bill Graham, the very first, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, plant tissue culture in your kitchen. You know, he's been yeah. the God, I like to call him the godfather of, uh, he of really is. To see. Yeah. Uh, but he's, he's really perfected this skill and, and taught us. And now we're trying mm -hmm. to teach the world as well. Uh, but what we're doing is we're removing the outer coat of the seed. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes a 20, 30, 40 year old seed doesn't have enough energy to germinate outside yeah. its coat. Um, so you, what we do is we make a slight incision um, after soaking it in like a hydrogen peroxide solution. Mm -hmm. For anybody that has you know questions on the actual details of or the actual protocols on how to do it, we're we're happy to share those. No problem. Just you know feel free to reach out to Matt. Get re feel free to reach out yeah. to us. You put some links um, or you can, too. Yeah, we'll we'll share the actual videos that we did. Uh, but I'm I'm you know, giving you the broad strokes here. So we're, we're cutting out the, the, the seed embryo and inducing it in a nutrient rich medium. So what we have here, for example, this is a gel, um, it's yeah. auger based. So this is completely right. vegan made out of seaweed. And this, this gel is mixed with a variety of macro and micronutrients. It's actually a proprietary formula that we'll be launching soon. Fun fact, and it, it works amazing. I mean, you can see this awesome. little guy. This is from a little tw 1121 guava tarts. Yep. One of the uh, seeds we actually popped on the video, but you know, it's rooting, it's looking beautiful. It's looking great. Um, you know, this nutrient media is about three times as rich in the macro and micronutrients that plants desire as like traditional yeah. soil. Yeah. So the seeds have not only the, you know, the energy to be able to germinate, but they're actually able to flourish, you know, both yeah, root, quite vigorous. develop shoots yeah. quite vigorously. I mean, this is uh, maybe 10 days yeah. after yeah. the seed just wouldn't move if we, yeah. if we planted it in the ground. So what, what we've tried to share with growers is that 
tissue culture is a new is is actually not a new tool. It's been around since the '60s yeah. and earlier. Uh, it really started in the orchid industry. Um, mm -hmm. Every orchid that you buy in your Trader Joe's or Walmart or grocery store is likely a clone and yeah. likely started in tissue culture. Right? Orchids are very hard to germinate from seeds, yeah, so tissue hard. culture, asexual propagation has been mm -hmm. the the go to mechanism. So now, at least within the the hemp and cannabis space, we're trying to tell growers, you can adopt these same technologies that have benefited some of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world, the largest agricultural companies in the world, flower companies, we can apply that same technology. And mm -hmm. it's, it's really right now being led by a lot of the private sector, I'd say. There are a few universities that can legally work with it. Um, but because of all the red tape and bureaucracy, it's taking a lot more time than it should. So mm -hmm. something like Embryo Rescue is one of the easiest, I'd say, steps um, in the tissue culture process. And when I say easy, it's it's not that the skill itself is easy, but the mechanism. And once you learn how to do it, you ride a bike, you, yeah. you're going to, you're going to excel. Um, but yeah, this at its very simplest form is I'd say step one. Um, if you're a grower, if you're a mm -hmm. breeder and you want to work with old seeds that yeah. You're, you're scared won't germinate. This is one of the best shots you have. Yeah. Um, you're cutting out that outer shell and you're exposing it to that nutrient rich media that it needs. And then the rest is uh, just watching it grow and putting it under light. Um, and then when you look at other kind of techniques that you'll learn along the way. So this is from nodal culture. Mm -hmm. um, what that means nodal is we're taking nodal propagation. So we're taking the cutting from a mother plant okay. and we're, using that nutrient rich media mm -hmm. and we're letting it flourish. And then from here, I would take this and I'd acclimate it either in rock wool cubes or I would, yeah, probably rock wool. Um, the, the biggest thing that I would tell growers or the biggest challenge they have is acclimating these plants. I mean, That's just like yeah. most plants need a hardening period. Yeah. So 10 to 12 days, you're, you're, you know, right now, this is close to 100% humidity mm -hmm. because there's a, a little vent right here. It's allowed yeah. to breathe, which means humidity is slightly less. However, you still want to adjust it, right? If yeah. I was to take this out and try to plant it in soil, it's not going to live. Yeah. Go, right. uh, yeah. yeah. yeah so, so there is an acclimation period. And, and what I, what I like to tell growers is all these skills can be obtained you know, you don't need a master's degree or a, a PhD to do this, uh, but you do need a will to, f uh, to fail and, and try again. So yeah. a lot of people will fa fail when you first start because contamination is a problem, right? Learning yeah. aseptic sure. technique, learning how to work in the uh, under, under a flow hood and, and how to avoid contamination risks is one of the biggest challenges. But again, um, we've had classes where people watch us do uh, meristem dissection, for example. They yeah. tell themselves, they're, you know, they're scared they're never going to be able to do it. And after three or four tries, they did it perfectly. Yeah. Once they did it once, they do it five, six, seven times and nothing's scary yeah. anymore. Yeah. So, we, you know, we've seen people from all age groups, all skill levels succeed in this. And it's, it's really just about commitment to yeah. pushing through some of those challenges and also just asking questions, right? If yeah. something doesn't work, why didn't it work? Was it the lighting? Was it the media? Was it the, was there ventilation or no ventilation? So I think a lot of people want kind of instant answers. And the good news is, you know, we're releasing a all in one media. So all you have to do is That's add awesome. water and, yeah. and uh, solidify it. However, um, if you want to do the research and want to work through it, you can do that too. And that's, that's where we can provide a guide for you. We have all the lists of PGRs that you can access, all the uh, different components that you would need to run your own experiments. But it's, uh, I, don't, I don't need to sell the specific products here. Um, no, but that, that's exciting kind of stuff. And, and when you're talking about it, one of the first things you mentioned early on was PPM. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about what that means so people understand what that means? Because most yeah, people so are growing would think that means parts per million, like, Yep. Measuring stuff out, you know. Yep. PPM, if you use fertilizers, you refer to parts per million. So plant preservative mixture at its at its simplest is a preservative that keeps out any bacteria or fungus from growing in this test tube without gotcha. damaging the plant itself. You know, pesticides and herbicides and certain fertilizers are sprayed on plants. Yeah. This is a way that we can avoid that altogether. Um, and it's mixed in with the media. It's autoclaved. Okay. So you would mix in the powder, you'd mix in the water, you'd add PPM, and then you'd autoclave it. 
and you're good to go. And what PPM does is if you make a mistake, if you uh, accidentally breathe or you might have touched your scalpel before you yeah, yeah. cut the plant, I mean, it's giving you an extra layer of insurance, gotcha. right? These medias, as I mentioned earlier, three times as nutrient rich as traditional soils. So you can imagine as much as the plant loves it, bugs love it, bacteria love it, Absolutely. Fungus, yeah. fungus loves it. So PPM is like PPM is insurance, right? You're yeah. you're operating in a tissue culture lab. You're inevitably going to get contamination. There are very few. I would say, I don't I don't even know if there are any labs that never experience contamination across the board. Humans are imperfect, right? Yeah. You're bound to make mistakes, um, and especially if you're doing thousands of cultures a day, your you, mistakes are going to be made. So PPM is that extra layer of security. No bacteria or fungus is going to be able to grow in there. And then you can transfer that plant so it's no longer exposed to those contaminants in that small space. So the the biggest challenge when a plant is exposed to fungus or bacteria in tissue culture versus in the field is you're competing for limited nutrients here um, versus a larger space. And you know, at its core, it's it's enabled labs around the world, whether they're in Pakistan or Benin or South Africa or Chile to be able to operate at the same level as some of the highest tech labs. Cause you know, you can work, there's a company called Viscon and I think they build out labs that are 10, 15, $20 million, right? Yeah. These are state of the art cream of the crop, best you can get of everything I'm sure. fully automated, beautiful labs. And then you have a lot of universities and research centers and companies in developing countries that might not be able to afford that, that likely can't afford that. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's where PPM can add a little bit more support to their facility, to their protocols and to their workflow. So that if their you know, workers inevitably do make a mistake, it's not going to cost them however much each test tube is worth. Um, so, you know, that that's really what got us the foot in the door. And so is companies that, knew us. Yeah, it's our creation. It was patented. Wow. Um, as it was a game and, changer, it was a major yeah. game changer for, for tissue culture. Yeah, the, the, the original claim was you could do tissue culture without a laminar flow hood, and people went crazy. Uh oh, I mean, that's uh oh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's that's that wasn't uh, you know, we posted that in a Minnesota University of Minnesota listserv, I think, in the 90s, and people yeah. just people were irate. Um, I bet, you know, I bet, yeah. try, try being an outsider coming into the industry and saying, actually, guys, you can do this differently. Um, yeah. And while we've had some success with that, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do recommend using a flow hood. I do recommend practicing aseptic technique because all those skills that you're going to learn and you're going to practice, it's the right way to do it, right? Yeah. You can shoot a basketball different ways, but learning the right shot, I'd say, is recommended for most players. For sure. Um, and, and I'd say the same goes for tissue culture. Um, but, you know, PPM is that revolutionary product that put us that put our foot in the door. And I, I, I can tell you it's over the last five, six years, um, if it weren't for a lot of our marketing and sales efforts, it's been hard. Um, some of our competitors are signing, you know, non-exclusive contracts with distributors. So, you know, they can only distribute products that our competitors don't carry. So yeah. it really forces us outside of our box to develop new products. Yeah. So PPM was the first. Um, we have two patent pending products now. One is called the BioCoupler and the right. BioPill. And can you tell uh, me a little bit about the BioCoupler? Because I know that's absolutely. a lot of your website. Absolutely. So I think since the 70s or 80s, there's been research in the plant tissue culture and, and agricultural technology space about temporary immersion. And temporary immersion is essentially your. In, in traditional semi-solid media, you have yeah. one contact point where the, the root of the plant or the, the base of the plant contacts the media and that's where it absorbs nutrients. With temporary immersion, you're actually soaking the whole plant in nutrients temporarily and then you're letting it dry out. So yeah. that mechanism and that 360 contact point uh, with the plant not only increases the speed at which that plant grows, but increases the actual quantity of plants that you're getting. Yeah. So this technology has been revolutionary for almost 50, 60 years, but the, the systems and contraptions and pipes and tubes for temporary immersion bioreactors are just not feasible. Uh, if you look at temporary immersion bioreactors today, a lot of them have, you know, two, three, four filters per bioreactor. They have these long air tubes that connect to those filters and then connect to oxygen tanks. Those tubes are bound to get contaminated. 
clogged. Oh, Those sure. filters are, are you know, you need to replace them maybe every six to 12 months. Those filters aren't cheap, yeah, right? Yeah. And the risk of losing maybe five liters worth of plants is high. So yeah. while the technology has been there, there hasn't been an application that's been feasible for the commercialization of it at scale. Um, and there are companies that use temporary immersion bioreactors. There are a few out there that are very good. I mean, they're amazing at what they do. Pumping in air works very well, um, but not necessarily as commercially feasible in the long run. So what we did is, uh, you know, at its simplest, it's, it's keep it simple, stupid, right? Yeah. The most complex systems sometimes are the simplest. So the yeah. biocoupler connects two glass devices. And mm -hmm. every time you rotate that device, there's an air exchange. So instead of mm -hmm. using a, a tube and instead of pumping in oxygen, the plants that every time the, the biocoupler rotates, oxygen is pumped through the little air patch filter that we have. And the process is quite simple. I mean, you screw out the bottom, you screw in new media. All you have to do is change out the media. And it's, I mean, it'll take you less than 30 seconds versus the old bioreactors might take you an hour, 20 oh, minutes, wow. 30 minutes. Uh, so what we've done is we've simplified the bioreactor model uh, by creating a more commercially viable option. And it's, it's incredible what it can do. Um, some plants like orchids, we're seeing 30, 40, 50 times multiplication rates versus traditional semi-solid media. You're getting three or four, three or four plants. You know, we're getting 40, we're getting 50. Um, we see this application being useful for all types of crops, bananas, pineapples, orchids, cannabis, you name it. And yeah. so what we've done the biocoupler is, is the base device. The yeah. bio tilt is our automated machine. So instead of you flipping the device every single yeah. day, we have a device that does that automatically. You can yeah. program it. You can set your own timing on it. You know, I want to flip it once every three hours. I want to flip it for, I want it to soak for two minutes. I want it to soak for three minutes. Mm -hmm. We've really created a tool that people can master and create their own research with uh, by making slight modifications to the programming. And yeah. that enables people to, with any species, have accessibility to a, a technology that's going to be a game changer that eventually will disrupt and I think maybe replace the tissue culture space. Oh, wow. And this is hopefully the, you know, 1.0, right? This is the Biotel yeah, yeah. 1.0. We're going to keep developing it, keep improving it. And the hope is that this will help growers mass produce plants that are clean yeah. more consistently and at a cheaper price than if they were using tissue culture. Because at the end of the day, the gelling agent that you're buying might cost you 90 to $100 a kilogram. Mm -hmm. With temporary immersion, you don't even need it. Wow. You just cut that from your budget altogether. That's so, yeah. And it's, it's been, and the funny part is it's not new, right? We didn't invent, we didn't invent the wheel here. We just made yeah, a better yeah. wheel that fits the car. Yeah. Uh, more, more efficient, efficient. wheel. Yeah. Doesn't break down as easy. The rubber treads last longer, easier to change the tires, right? We're, we're, we're trying to make tissue culture more accessible to people. And, and that's through education, but also through R&D. And I'll tell you, it's, uh, you know, developing the stuff is not cheap and it takes a lot of time. So yeah, <laughs> we're, we're doing our best and we are a fairly small company. So I think a lot of people look at our website or look at our history and they think we're this huge corporation, but we're not. Yeah. Um, we're, I think four or five full-time people. I mean, we have a That's lot awesome, of contractors right? and yeah. we do contract manufacturing, but yeah, it's family business. We we're we're expanding very fast and, you know, anybody who's listening that made an order and that's still waiting on it, you know, thank you for your patience. We apologize. I yeah. mean, Black Friday was you. kind of insane for us. We're, uh, oh, sure. we're so grateful. I mean, look, these are all blessings. I, I just want to be able to keep up with the demand and I, I just want people to, to know that we're here for them because yeah, it's, it's a daunting industry. It's, you know, you, you look on Google or Wikipedia and you just, there's all these journals and papers. And if you're not from that world, mm -hmm. it's intimidating. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we can be that bridge for, for the growers and especially in the cannabis space. Like we're here to help, you know, we're here to answer your questions. We want you to use this tool because um, hops, latent viroid, fusarium, uh, spider mites, powdery mildew. I mean, these are big problems. Major. And they're costing growers money. I mean, yeah. I think I like to equate, um, maybe maybe this is controversial, but I like to call hops latent viroid the AIDS of, of Yeah, cannabis. it is. It is, and people don't realize it. Yeah. Like 
unless you're uh, heavily into genetics collecting and like I, yeah. we have ears all over the, the world. And now we're hearing about labs in Spain going down, like mm -hmm. that have the major collections that have been mm -hmm. over in Amsterdam, stuff that haven't made it over here. Like it's bad. It's, it's, it's scary thorough. and everybody has it yeah. or, you yeah. know, 70, 80% of growers have it. And so the good news to that problem is there is a cure. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. is, there is a protocol and a, a, a mechanism of remediating those plants. And that's where we come in. That's where plant tissue culture thrives. Yeah. So the for for surface pathogens when you're talking about some of your your common pests right your powdery mildew your spider mm -hmm. mites those are more easily curable with um surface sterilization and nodal culture right yeah. we're yeah. we're taking parts of the plant that might not yet be infected or if they are infected they're they're less there's a, a lower uh bug count than other parts of the leaf we're yeah killing it we're you know, surface sterilizing that leaf and then we're inducing it in media that's yeah. clean and then keeping it in this clean container away from your mother room, away from potential contaminants. Exactly. So if your HVAC technician comes in the room, he's not going to be able to infect this little guy because it's sealed. Yeah. As opposed to your mother room, good luck. You know, if, yeah. uh, if he brings in something from another facility or if you forget to clean your, your shears or if somebody brings in cuttings and they don't quarantine it adequately, it will spread. Oh, yeah. Um, when it comes to fusarium and, you know, hops latent biroid, the worst of them all, that's yes. where we really focus on the apical meristem dissection. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing, we have tons of videos on this if, you're, if your users are interested, is we're isolating the apical meristem, which if you think about it is the primordial tissue not connected to the rest of the plant. Yep. Uh, yep. With scientific terms, it's, it's disconnected from the vasculature of the plant tissue. So that cell cluster is not yet exposed to whatever viroid or virus or fungus has yeah. infected the rest of the plant. I mean, you're literally going down to millis millimeters, going very, very small. I mean, it's you won't be able to see it with the naked eye. We yeah. use a hypodermic needle to isolate it, and then we put it in this grow medium. And, you know, in, in wow. three months, it'll grow it'll grow up to be a normal plant. But yeah. it's small. It's tiny. But yeah. that's the mechanism at least our best plan of action, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if a plant is highly infected, you might have to do it a couple times, yeah. which means you take the meristem, you let it grow out, then you take a meristem, meristem again, you let that, it grow yeah. out. It really depends on the viral load, but right now, that is our best mechanism. That is our yeah. best tool that we can use. And we're not using pesticides, we're not using herbicides, we're not soaking it in anything that's gonna you know, affect the actual outcome of the plant down the line when it's eventually yeah. consumed. Uh, but this mechanism is, highly highly beneficial um and i'd say it's it's probably the hardest skill to learn in tissue culture yeah um, so <laughs> luckily nodal culture is fairly basic and, and something yeah. most people can learn but meristem takes a little bit of practice but what i can tell you is a hundred dollar microscope you can do it hypodermic needle you can buy it on amazon yeah um you know you can really practice and get better at this skill or you just have one guy you know joey is the the guy and he can do 20 30 an hour right yeah. um but what we tell growers especially when it comes to viroids and you know fusarium specifically is take as many meristems as you can right because yeah. you don't you don't want to use your meristem we, we like to be preventative instead of reactive yeah. um so the proactive measure is you know keeping your spaces clean uh, bleaching the floors, you know, following proper, pro proper um, sterile conditions and, and keeping your overall facility clean, right? Not everybody yeah. does that. But meristemming and learning that skill is, I'd say, the last resort. Yeah. Uh, the first resort is using tissue culture, using nodal culture, testing your plants, keeping them backed up so yeah. that inevitably, if and when something does get infected, great, I have 10 of these or 50 of these, so I can time it out in two to three weeks, they'll be in the veg room and ready to go. But you have backups and we yeah. have the mechanism to back up our genetics now. So we, we shouldn't be hearing about cannabis strains going extinct. We shouldn't be hearing about, you know, oh, I can't, I can't get guava tarts anymore because it's all, it's gone, right? Yeah, Every I'm, grower I'm, that's had a healthy cut. Fortunately, God we'll forbid. have guava tart until we fucking stop, can't stop vomiting because it's all exactly. stuff. But yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, just it, hypothetical there. Yeah, is saying, you know, God forbid, you know, God forbid, especially with some of the more medicinal strains, right? The lower yeah, THC, yeah. but more unique cannabinoid profiles yeah. that actually really help people that are, you know, dealing with a wide variety of health issues. God forbid Absolutely. one of those strains goes extinct because uh, a 
pesky viroid wiped it out. Yeah. So what I'd like to, you know, tell growers and tell you specifically is please, 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 even if you're not going to invest in a lab, open your mind to tissue culture, right? Yeah. This is a tool that you will be using in the next five to 10 years. It's not an if, it's a when. Yeah. And start practicing uh, because your yeah. genetics are your business, right? Yeah. If you're if you're an operator that owns properties, you have property insurance, you have flood yeah. insurance, you likely have fire insurance if you live in California. Yeah. As a cannabis grower, you should have insurance for the number one product that you're selling, which is your which is your flowers, yeah. right? So that's what tissue culture does: is we're backing up your genetics, we're protecting those genetics, and and we're keeping them contained so that when you need them, when when the disaster strikes, that's okay. We have fifty backups ready to go. Yeah. Um, and then secondly, I'd say the main benefit of tissue culture for growers that aren't as familiar is what if you could shrink your mother room by three fourths? I yeah. mean, the whole concept of the mother room is going to become extinct. The idea of keeping these huge trees alive attracts pests, attracts bugs, takes up yes, energy, takes up space. Now imagine if, you know, your mother room was a hundred square feet instead of yeah. 1200. And imagine if you could have two more bedrooms in there, or you could dedicate that space or a lab, a mother room, and something else. So growers are obviously dealing with a wide variety of issues, whether it's high taxation, whether it's you know high capex, labor costs. This is another mechanism where tissue culture can be a tool to actually reduce and lower your costs in the long run by yeah. better optimizing the way that you grow and optimizing the way that you use your space to effectively produce plants that flower. Um, so yeah, that's, I, I, I could talk about TC and its applications and its, its use cases all day. I think it's, it's paramount for tissue, for cannabis to survive. Oh, um, yes. and yeah, man, we're, we're just excited. This, this media is going to be launched soon. Um, we have all these new products that growers can use and experiment with specifically with, uh, the hemp cannabis space and, um, our classes, of course, you know, we have classes online, we have classes in person, we have pre-recorded classes. Like there's, there's a million resources. So I don't want to hear somebody say there's, there's not enough information out there. We have 800 videos for free on YouTube yeah. on how to do this. Uh, and that's just scratching the surface. So, you know, our, our dedication to the community is that we, we want this, this skill, this, this scientific practice to thrive in the cannabis space because it's important. It's important for people it helps people. And, uh, this is just one way that we can do it more efficiently. Yeah. You Sound know, like I'm preaching the gospel. <laughs> no, I mean, a lot of the moms in, um, the cannabis space are kept in, uh, I would say traditional market is yep. as opposed to legal market, um, or, or commercial market, I guess mm -hmm. the commercial market is, would be the legal market now. Yeah. Um, they're kept in more shoddy, like homes and stuff. Like a lot of the mm -hmm. really old rare stuff by people yeah. who don't trust anyone. So it's yeah. really nice to see, you know, you guys coming out, putting all this stuff out there, uh, showing yeah. how it can be used. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see that 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 space adapt, start installing laminar flow hoods in, in houses that are blowing up. I think it's important. I think it's awesome, but it's, it's going to be the turning point because the commercial market doesn't have access to most of what mm -hmm. needs to be saved in the first place. Yeah. yeah. Second inning, man. Second yeah. inning. We're, that, that's what's so exciting about this is we, we haven't even scratched the surface of what we can do with this technology. I mean, oh, yeah, soon yeah. We, we already have this, the, the technology to extract secondary metabolites. So imagine growing THC or CBD or terpenes just on in gel without the yeah. actual plant. Yeah, right. Extracting, extracting those chemicals directly. Yeah. Right. So there, we're, we're going to continue to develop more efficient mechanisms. That's not to say we're going to make growing flower obsolete and growing plants obsolete. Absolutely sure. not. But as the industry develops and as hopefully research opens up on the medicinal side, we'll be yes. able to better identify cannabinoid profiles and terpenes that actually help people and then grow those specific profiles yeah um without That's a you know thing. it's huge being able to it's reproduce huge. something exactly without worrying mm -hmm. about the environment like that would be a, a massive step in reproduction and medicinal qualities of everything i think so and think yeah, about it yes. if you're taking an advil if i'm if i'm taking uh you know Advil, I want 10 milligrams every time. I don't want 10 yeah, exactly. and 9.7 and 8.9. Yeah. It's not a medicine at that point. You're just guessing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this, this 
tissue culture specifically is is one of the I'd say most important steps that will marry the industry as it transitions from you know black market gray market to fully yeah. white market corporatized commercialized at a large scale and yeah. it's happening it's it's you know you're seeing your largest producers your segras you have conception and node labs i mean you have a lot of companies in the space however and we were talking about this a little earlier backstage mm -hmm. but there are also a lot of people that love the word tissue culture and they, oh, yeah. they use that buzzword to claim what they're doing is tissue culture when in reality it, it might not be tissue culture it might be something else that they're calling tissue culture mm -hmm. or they might just be doing tissue culture incorrectly and charging somebody a arm Very and a leg for it yeah. so what i tell people is be wary right do your due diligence who are these companies that are popping out of nowhere that are claiming to you know have the protocols and the knowledge and the skills to do it it's very likely that they do have them right but at the same time any industry that starts to blow up or, or starts to get popular attracts people that like to take advantage of others especially so, one with the gray market where that you can't get so easily yeah I've, I've noticed that. so yeah. you know you don't have to work with us i just want you to you know your hard-earned money should go to somebody that can actually help you and not somebody that's going to use a buzzword uh claim yeah. to claim to do it charge you and then you know you're left with a plant that's still infected dead or you know or worse <laughs> yeah it's seed companies and, are is the same thing yeah. it's it's the same cesspool of uh of people there's breeders and then there's seed makers in my in my mm -hmm. mind there's people that breed yeah. and then there's people that can make seeds which is everyone that has a male and a female and mm -hmm. trying to for people coming in trying to guess who is who is the mm -hmm. is the worst game ever and like marketing doesn't quite relay who is what and does what yeah, yeah. tissue culture for me for me going from seed to tissue culture and trying to navigate that sphere it's a completely still like foreign sphere to me even though i should be massively invested in it it's, it's been so tenuous and yeah i mean we'll, we'll send you some stuff you can play yeah, yeah, around I'm, I'm, i mean I'm happily do it. yeah yeah you don't you don't need a, a 500 square foot lab to do this i need a um, laminar flow hood because every time i've tried it <laughs> i've massively failed massively but it's it's been because of small little and you know infections it's or whatever. it's it's infections or, or contaminants so now we'll, we'll yeah. get you some ppm we'll get you some test tubes and then hopefully depending on how good the instructions were in that video you can yeah. start practicing on some seeds i mean I, i'd recommend some seeds that aren't valuable to you first just so you oh, can yeah, master sure. the protocol yeah yeah but, you know getting the getting the skills of grabbing the scalpel putting the seed in without touching the surfaces you know being mm -hmm. careful with your hands it's it's the first step man and imagine just pheno hunting in this way you can yeah. just put them on a shelf and you can have 10,000 of these little guys that take up, That'd you know, maybe a library shelf instead of a whole farm, right? Yeah. Your, your, your space efficiency is increased by a magnitude of 10 to 15 times. Yeah. So, you know, you can really store them, keep them safe and secure in these test tubes. Eventually, you know, there is, there is some maintenance with this, right? So yeah. you're not just going to put this in a test tube. It'll eventually outgrow the test tube. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know that that's what you want. That'll to grow happen, right? fast. That looks yeah. like it'll grow fast. Out of it'll it. grow yeah. fast. So there is a there yeah. is a maintenance uh, a maintenance involved with this, and whether it's every two to three four weeks, you're going to change that plant to new media. Sure. Uh, but that plant itself can survive in that media for you know extensively forever. Um, no scientific report will ever say forever or hundred yeah. percent with anything, but a long time. Of, yeah, probably outlive you and me. Yeah, um, right. And you know we're I like to think of ourselves as conservationists, right? We're we're caretakers for these plants, for yeah. these genetics that hopefully generations will experience, will consume, will uh, will get to take care of or or be exposed to. So yeah, I mean it all comes back to tissue culture is necessary. I've said it a million times. I feel bad, but you guys are just you need, you need it. <laughs> it's yeah. very no, it, it is. <laughs> um, it, you know, like what, one of the few things that I've seen, and and I'd like to ask you how you would mitigate something like this. Early sure. on, when tissue culture became like a buzzword, uh, maybe ten years ago, like in cannabis, when people really started pushing it hard, they were um, selling whole nurseries were selling like tissue culture and saying like, yes, we'll we'll, we'll give you a thousand plants, you can run them right now, start it. Mm -hmm. And then they'd run them and everything would have intersex issues right away or or some kind of hormonal issues coming out mm -hmm. of just tissue culture, running the plantlets straight in. Um, yeah. How do you mitigate stuff like that? How do you mitigate that from happening? That's a great question. So first and foremost, testing. 
right? Yeah. At its at its finest, we're using the same testing devices that they use to test for COVID. Yeah. That we're using to test for hops latent viroid, thermocyclers, yeah. PCR machines. Uh, fortunately, as the, the need for these devices has increased, the price has gone down. That's so true. supply demand, you know, it might co- it might have cost you ten, fifteen thousand dollars to get access to a a proper PCR machine that could run for hops latent viroid. Um, yeah. Now you might be able to get one for cheaper. Maybe not fifteen thousand. Maybe five, six, seven thousand. But yeah, I think when tissue culture first started becoming a buzzword people well i can't speak for everyone but a a small percentage of that industry use that buzzword to sell and make quick money as we know this industry is actually a lot smaller than people give it credit for and you know your reputation is everything so uh hurting people and and taking advantage of them is is an easy way to go bankrupt quick as a business um so testing products i i would say is is the easiest way to avoid any of these issues, right? You can do gender screening and gender testing. Uh, Mini PCR is a great company. I think their device is like $1,500. There's only six wells, so it'll take you a little while, but you can can run gender screening on that device. Um, For hops, latent viroid, there's some great companies. Toomey Genomics has a- Yeah, we've um, interviewed Toomey, they're great. Yeah, Yeah. Toomey has a great device um, that's, it's awesome. Yeah, you can test for hops latent viroid. I'd say the only challenge with the device as of now is it doesn't tell you viral load. It'll yeah. just tell you positive or negative. So oh, and if you obviously, a major factor. Yeah. It can be, especially if you're you're trying to determine how bad the plant is yes. infected, how many, how yeah. many remediation cycles do we need to go through? That's a good thing to know. But again, again, Tumi also has a lab. You can send them plants directly yeah. and they can run tests in lab. Agdia is another great one. They have their device, I think. I don't think it also tells viral load, but it, it will tell you a positive or negative. I have to confirm, so don't hold me to it. Yeah. Uh, sorry, idea if I got that wrong, uh, but they're great. You know, they lent us a device that we were using for our master classes for a good year, actually, and that thing was yeah. probably ten, twelve thousand dollars. Oh, uh, we ran awesome, a, we ran a number of hops latent viroid tests. Fortunately, none of the cuttings and plants we brought in had it. Yeah. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, because I think it's also good to experiment with it. But we also just hops latent viroid is a viroid that can transfer not only from cannabis oh, to, yeah. to other crops. So we got to be yeah. careful, um, especially in our lab. But yeah, we, we luckily didn't bring anything home. So the simple answer to your question is making sure you're checking all the boxes, right? They're doing yeah. tissue culture. Okay, what does that mean? Are they doing nodoculture? Are they rooting in vitro or ex vitro? So in the test tube or out of the test tube? Mm-hmm. What's, what stages are they running through in tissue culture versus out of tissue culture? Are they actually running testing or are they just taking plants, putting in tissue culture and hoping for the mm-hmm. best? Yeah, so yeah, I think a lot of people are doing the latter because yeah, yeah. that's- Because tests cost money. money. And yeah, yeah tests cost money. It's like $40, $50 a test. It's not cheap. Yeah. yeah. However, <laughs> As a commercial business, if that is your if if that's your business, if that's your welfare, I highly recommend investing in those tests. I recommend yeah, absolutely. allocating part of your budget towards the due diligence required to keep your actual product clean. Yeah. And uh, yeah. that's the missing link. So yeah. the testing companies combining with the tissue culture knowledge gives us that full 360 perspective of are my plants male or female? What are the terpene profiles, THC profiles, everything else when it comes to testing for heavy metals, testing for preservatives? And then also, does this plant have hops? Does this plant have fusarium? Does this plant have any of the other pathogens, viroids and viruses that plague this industry? And so we have the knowledge, we have the machinery and the skills to do it. It's just about, I guess, helping people and teaching them. So in our class, we, we do spend at least half a day to a day on testing because testing is not yeah. easy. Um, it's yeah, not no, as no. simple as, you know, putting a plant in a test tube and, you know, there, there are steps and it's, it's kind of like cooking, but I'd yeah. say it's more like baking where you got to use the exact amount of flour and you got to use the exact amount of eggs. Otherwise it's going to overcook or undercook. So same goes with using a QPCR machine, using a thermocycler, using some of those devices. Uh, but with anything, practice makes perfect. And yeah. so the education, the opportunity to learn, it's all there. Um, but I think as a grower, as a breeder, as somebody that's 
working in the commercial side of this space, you have to make that decision, right? From a budget standpoint, does it make more sense to do this in-house? Does it make more sense to send it out and, and send it out to labs that do testing? Uh, that really comes down to your budget, your patience, your um, commitment to investing in the equipment and the protocols and the people, right? The labor yeah. to be able to do it. That's that's just a whole other component, right? Everybody you hire in the, in the facility likely already has a job. So who, who's going to take over? uh for who's going to do testing so that's that's a, that's a question that really comes down to your business plan your needs and your budget um so something i, I do recommend growers take seriously and, and consider but um still it's it's very important because again tissue culture needs to be coupled with the testing otherwise you're really kind of shooting in the dark here yeah yeah that makes sense i mean it's that way with breeding even i believe it yeah uh if you don't if you don't eventually test in some way have someone yeah. even even if it's down to having someone smoke it and having a group of people smoking it mm -hmm. you're not getting any kind of feedback and it's all shooting in the dark i mean yeah or or you're just losing time right yes yes and if you're doing real breeding it's time and time is time money. is time is money <laughs> <laughs> time is money time and is it's all we have Exactly. Something you don't get back. So if we can cut that cycle in half, right, you don't have to grow it out to a certain point or you already know what the problem is and you can mitigate that problem. That saves you yeah, money, a absolutely. lot of money, um, especially in the long run. I think people are thinking very short term when it comes to these businesses. And I get it right. Cannabis is incredibly competitive, very cutthroat, very hard to succeed. <laughs> I think people outside the industry think it's like this, you know, everybody's making cash hand over hand yeah, not you know, <laughs> no the margins are tight i know yeah. i get it i've spoken to hundreds of growers and i i empathize with you guys i it, guys and girls it's 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 hard and we yeah. know it and so we're just trying to find ways through the technology that we're you know applying to every other plant species alive mm -hmm. how can we also use this for cannabis how can we also optimize this process and give you more time back or give you more space back or you know, save a little bit of room in your budget for, you know, keeping your genetics alive for another couple of years or yeah. forever. Right. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it is funny how it really started with orchids though. Yeah. Um, yeah it doesn't surprise me. Like I, I used to collect orchids quite a bit. It's, so, yeah. It's yeah, like a $3 it's, billion dollar industry. It's huge. Yeah. yeah I just thought they were it, beautiful. And, and as I was learning, I was like, well, you know, what's a Kiki, what's that, you know, and then starting to learn how people, <laughs> how people, you know, you can't just pop seeds of orchids. It's not like cannabis. And yeah, it blew my mind that you just couldn't go pop seeds of this stuff. Why can't I just go get seeds? Yeah, cool. Yeah. They're dust. The seeds are yeah. literally dust. And so yeah. you have to spread them out in, in gel media for them to actually start to germinate. But um, what's cool about the cannabis space is I, I think because of the passion and love and variety that exists and just biodiversity within the cannabis plant itself this is i mean it, this this could be one of the best mechanisms of getting people into genetics right oh sure human genetics yeah. can benefit from this inevitably if we train hundreds of thousands of technicians that know how to isolate a meristem that know how to work with cell culture That's right whether you know working with certain hormones whether you're telling a plant to to produce shoots or roots or callus i mean mm -hmm. all these skills will eventually be translated or translatable into animal culture into cell culture into human cell culture so you know, we're just we're just scratching the surface with plants, and the beauty is cannabis is a mechanism for this industry to grow because yeah. people love that plant more than anything else I can imagine. I mean, orchids are probably the second most popular, or second or first most popular, you know, maybe irrational love. Um, mm -hmm. Even though they're incredible plants, I love orchids. Nothing yeah. against orchids, but because of the biodiversity and the genetic, you know, the uniqueness of genetics with cannabis. People are going to be diving into this, and I think this industry and this this science is only going to grow from here. Um, I think so. Yeah, it's similar. It's, I like to say it's how the adult entertainment industry developed the internet, right? Yeah, it really yeah, started it off is. with yeah, you know, webcam girls and yeah. chats and and really raw footage, but that you know created this explosion with programmers and people that were so interested in the space. So, you know, sometimes yeah. the vices lead us into uh, the bigger <laughs> picture, but, um, you know, it's, there's a, there's a long way to go. Uh, there's still a lot of applications that we need to find out and growers need to 
take the time to figure out how it works for them, right? I'm not going to tell you that tissue culture can replace the way that you grow today. It's not yeah, going to yeah. replace the way you grow today. We're yeah. not trying to get rid of your um, I mean, we are trying to get rid of your mother room, but we're not, we're not trying to get rid of everything, right? <laughs> yeah, what right. we're trying to do is say, hey, here's a new tool that you can use, yeah. right? You've been trying to use a screwdriver, but it's not exact, it's not, you know, the grooves aren't aligning quite right. So yeah. this, this is a, a new tool that you can add that can help you with X, Y, Z. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all part of the process. And I have a question for you. Yeah, is, yeah. Is, is pheno hunting, like as a as somebody that's into seeds and breeding, is, is pheno hunting expensive yeah, or timely? To do, it right, to do it right, to do it correctly. I mean, when you're talking about pheno hunting, like is it, are you going and getting something from another country and are you trying to have it expressed the same way it expresses in that country? At that point, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's a crapshoot, like trying to get yeah. it done and, and to do it very expensive, popping thousands, mm -hmm. trying to replicate the soil density, porosity, what's 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 its makeup is you know um but when it comes down to like let's say i want to uh, select blueberry from something um mm -hmm. it's a lot easier because there's so much work that's been laid out before it's just having sure. enough experience to know what direction and why but pheno you know, hunting is is everything if you're a breeder um seed make if you're just a seed maker i'd say it's more of a marketing thing like hey you can get all these phenos from this plant when ideally when you're breeding, you don't want to have a bunch of expressions, a wide swath mm. of expressions. You would more likely want a minimal amount of expressions so people can get mm. a proven plant from a set of seeds, ideally. And and for for you or for some growers, obviously, you know, I'm sure the timeline varies, but what, what would you say is the average time from a grower to pheno hunt, find traits and expressions that they like, and then actually produce that plant at scale? Three years, I'd say, would three be ideal. years. Three years, yeah, to do it correctly, to, wow. to pop seeds, do proper pheno hunts, run it once, run it twice, run it three times to make sure that it's going to be replicating the same expressions you saw the first time, and then, yeah, then if you want to take it and breed it, I would say like you would feminize the seed to yep. to speed up the process, self it, and uh, go from there. Maybe self it a few times. Yeah, so that, in that case, it would be seven, eight years. I would hate to lose three to ten years worth of work. Yeah, because some some technician brought in a bug and killed my my plants. It yeah, that, that just it's insane. Yeah, to think and yeah, I mean, people that do spend the time and have the skills to do that. I mean, I can imagine you get tired after you lose a certain amount of genetics, and so we, yes. we need these guys to keep going, uh, yeah. guys and girls, you know, whoever, however they identify, to keep going because. Yeah, no, it's a lot of work. It's time intensive. And so use tissue culture, please back up your genetics, yeah. please, please, I mean, you know, help us, help us help you. <laughs> I've lost whole collections at, at certain points. And then eventually, like three years ago, I was like, fuck this. No more mom room. Nothing gave all of my moms to everyone else and just started working on my stuff from seed. But now that I'm getting back to because uh, I, I, I literally stuck my head in the blueberry genetics. And until I have was producing a perfect blueberry smelling tasting plant sure. reliably in seed. But now I've got, I'm like, oh man, I need to go get my mom's again. Shit. Yeah. You know? And now I'm like, man, do I really want to like 18 years of a mom room sucks. Like running yeah. a big mass. I mean, we were, we were running between a hundred and I don't know, at some points, 180 moms to down Jeez. to 30 to 40. But when people don't realize like, that's a lot of, of moms. You're constantly cycling clones, cycling clones. Oh, yeah. Because we work in tissue culture. So you've got seven or eight clones of one thing just to hope you don't mm -hmm. miss, you know. And and there's only a few of us still doing that in the world. Mm -hmm. And they're not in major corporations. They don't even interact with them because they won't, you know. And mm -hmm. and what, what part of our job, like, I feel like, or, or, or what we're doing with the Breeder Syndicate is trying to, in, trying to break the, the mold between what's going on with the legal market, what's going on with the traditional market, which is where mm -hmm. we're at mm -hmm. and talking to people in academia and in science mm -hmm. and yeah. trying to link all those because like a lot of people in academia don't understand that there's only a few historians in cannabis that understand how everything came to be and could put that together because it's a really closed circuit of people and yeah. everybody really deeply knows each other. And then getting those people to talk to those people and linking it all around so nobody ends up getting screwed by the marketers in between. It's hard. Inevitably. Yeah. yeah. 
like I said, I still got screwed it going to the, the tissue culture market. Like, and I thought I, I thought I, I thought I could be totally competent. I know cannabis, blah, 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 and still got worked. So, you know, it's, it's, tough. it's slightly different and, and, you know, yeah. cannabis expresses itself a little differently and in, in tissue culture, you're, you're inducing stress. This plant yeah. is under stress. This yeah. is not its normal growth environment. Yeah, right. So it will have interesting expressions, right? If yeah. you use too many hormones, it won't grow well. Yeah. So there is a right and wrong way of doing it. And, um, with people, what I like to say is just start basic. Don't, don't yeah. play around too much with hormones and this and that. Just, just be simple, try it at its simplest. And, uh, we, we do have like some base protocols to use, but, um, really start there. Uh, and then eventually you can run your R and D and of course strains will respond differently. That's the, that's the craziest part is the genetic diversity will cause, you know, whether it's due to the terpenes or the THC or the CBD or, you know, a variety of other factors, one plant might not grow as well in the same media as another plant. Absolutely. So this is, this is why we're still very much in that development phase in figuring out how growers can commercialize this. And with our formula, we've seen, I mean, the formula works for, I don't know, maybe 90, 95% of strains, but there are some yeah. outliers, right? Sure. And that's, that's where continued R and D comes in. So we're never, we're never done researching. We're never, fully satisfied with our products. Maybe PPM is the one product that we really can't improve because it, it, it works. Yeah. Um, but with medias and protocol, there's always going to be new things to improve on. And so I, I know we're, we're coming close on the hour here, but one thing I wanted to mention that we didn't talk about briefly is yeah, synthetic so seeds. Yeah. Are you familiar with synthetic seeds? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, Dutch passion, uh, uh, one of the, uh, uh Dutch companies I think mm. 15 years ago, did a small release of them and realized mm. that most people didn't know what to do with them once they got them. Yeah, but, but it was a great idea. It was cool to see it. But yeah, that's yeah. it. That was the first time I'd seen it brought to the cannabis market uh, on any scale, and it was small, it was small scale. But that, that's where the biocouple comes in. So we yeah. found that there's really two ways of germinating synthetic seeds. Mm -hmm. One is temporary immersion, which is very effective. And yeah. then the second is actually breaking that, you know, seed coat, uh, like the, the little gel coat and mm -hmm. placing that plant in media in rich yeah. culture media. Um, but the implications of this are huge because not only are transporting plants problematic because they die or they get contaminated, but um, now you can get, you can probably fit two, 300 little plantlets. We call them synthetic seeds, but they're actually yeah, yeah. just, they're, they're little nodes from the yeah. plant that will eventually grow to be big. Um, you can fit two, 300 in one test tube and you can travel with it everywhere. I mean, cause they're not seeds. That's amazing. They're yeah. encapsulated little tapioca balls. If you know, if you look at it, but how does that work legally? Like since they aren't quite seeds and they aren't quite, well, I plead the fifth. Yeah, I mean, like it's one of those things where, like, I just don't know. That, yeah, I don't. Cool. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I won't speak on the legal implication. I'm not a lawyer, and I yeah. won't recommend one thing or another because, again, sure. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, we just, layer, we yeah. just, we just, we just know the technology and how it's used for different plants, different flowers, spicy tomatoes, if you will. Yeah. Um, but the 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 biggest thing that your customs officers are looking for is soil, yeah. Yeah. right? Dirt brings bugs, dirt yes. brings fungus, dirt brings contaminants that are foreign to wherever you're going. So Absolutely. that's the big problem. But with a phytosanitary certificate, this is certified sterile. Yeah. This has been fully sterilized. You know, this one isn't, but usually, you know, wrapped, covered, sealed. So there is no risk of this specific test tube infecting our, our, food system or, yeah. or, or animals or, or yeah. yeah. So this, this eliminates one of the biggest risks within transporting. Um, and then secondly, just the mode of transporting. I mean, it's so much easier. Imagine oh, yeah. if you're a grower, instead of having to buy a truck and, you know, putting these mothers in a huge truck, you can put little test tubes in a vial and send them or yeah. drive them over. I mean, it, it's, it's a game changer with how much space you can you can save and how much efficiency you can take advantage of um and it's just yeah it's just it's another toolkit that people can use that we're working on developing further so first how long can these synthetic seeds survive 
Um, so we're doing research on that. Second is what are the best mechanisms of germinating the synthetic seeds? Yeah. And then third, what are the best formulas for those synthetic seeds, Absolutely. right? To keep them alive, to keep them contamination free and to keep them sterile. So all of these points in research are, you know, in progress, are being developed and, you know, stuff that we will share with the community, of course, uh, whether it's via products, via protocols, or just via training in our in our classes yeah. but we want growers to to use all these tools accessible to them to improve their operations right how can you yeah. save money here how can you save time here how can you create more space efficiency here um at the end of the day that's that's what this is it's it's we're optimizing the way that we grow yeah whether it's cannabis whether it's orchids whether it's pineapples um they're all plants and they all require the same thing light nutrients water, <laughs> oxygen. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're doing. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. And like I said, second inning, man, it's still a ball game. We have a lot to learn and a lot to do. And, you know, we haven't even scratched the surface. At so, what point yeah. in your life did you get into to the cannabis sphere of this uh, business? So you said it was a family yeah. business, right? Yeah. So I would say right around the time the hemp bill was passed. Okay. is when yeah. we started really trying to better understand the cannabis space. Mm -hmm. um, because like I said earlier, you know, Bill Graham is probably the first and only that, public, yeah. public person. Yeah, he's amazing yeah. to really work with cannabis and to yeah. publicize it, right? Yeah, there were, actively. you know, University of Mississippi has been, I guess they had some, some deals. Oh, with Stone, yeah, yeah, he, he yeah, did a lot of yeah. University of Guelph. I mean, there are these large institutions, amazing institutions with yeah. unbelievable, you know, Sma Zaboya, Dr. Zaboya, and people who've been in this space who know the plant left and right. Um, but it was really hidden for 15 years, 20 years, maybe. So I think people really, we, we started getting into it 2017, 2018, um, and connecting within our network of customers. Cause we, we do sell products, you know, a lot of these universities, University of Guelph or these, these large companies already use our products. They yeah. already know us. Um, so it's just about, you know, sharing data or sharing research. We want to better understand what you're working on. Why is it important? What are the implications? And then going to conferences, like we went to CanMed and I learned a lot about, you know, how to test for some of these virus viruses and viroids, mm -hmm. how to, um, use testing technology to better understand uh, or to better integrate uh, tissue culture and commercial operations with testing. So there are more and more resources now than there ever were before. What I tell you is five, six years ago, I guess before we started on YouTube, you might've found somebody with an accent on a, wi on a whiteboard or a chalkboard yeah. drawing you know, stage one tissue culture, stage two tissue yeah. culture, writing out scientific terms, trying to explain it, but you know, I appreciate the effort, but it didn't do it. Yeah. Right. So we started making videos so that I, I myself could better understand the process. You know, I'm yeah. a visual learner. I want to see it. I want yeah. to, um, as I'm reading, see what they're actually doing. Um, and so there are a few amazing books, like one's called, uh, plants from test tubes yeah. Mark Bridgeton, and yeah. a few other authors, yeah, I but that one. Yeah. amazing book, very yeah. just, insightful, easy way to learn. But yeah, I mean, cannabis camp, <laughs> cannabis camp, cannabis hemp really, I think started seven, six, five, six years ago. And now it's really kind of grown to his life, to a life of its own and really helping support us and some of the R and D that we're doing or answering questions. And, you know, we're getting questions that we never thought of that yeah. we can now pursue because people want to figure out how they can utilize this or, or how this can be efficient for the way that they grow. So it's it's really something it's a gift that keeps on giving, right? Because yeah, growers yeah. have nonstop questions, unlimited curiosity, and desire to see their plants healthy, desire to see yeah. their plants grow and 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 thrive. So um, we're learning as much as they are along the way, and it's 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 beautiful, right? We're yeah. and and all that information, or a lot of that information, is public. Yeah, as I'd it love to be. take you to one of our parties where a bunch of these old yeah old reclusive breeders go and meet up and hang out yeah so, man. So you could, we uh, you could talk to the to the guys that were involved in doing this from the beginning and, and get yeah it, we'd love to yeah i mean we went to mj last year and mj Viscon and we set up a flow hood just 
in the middle of a party. Yeah. I mean, there was so much smoke you could barely see, but <laughs> we showed people what we were doing, right? This is tissue yeah. culture, this, you know, big buzzword that, you know, you thought would cost you $50,000 or yeah. $2 million. No, it's just a flow hood, some equipment and a protocol, right? Yeah. And showing people, getting them under the hood, giving them the tools, like once they really simplify it and mm -hmm you know, see it for themselves. It's not as scary as, as it sounds, right? Yeah. It is, it is something to learn, but it's not as complicated as, uh, requiring a PhD for the very basics, right? Obviously you want to run research, you want to yeah. run the lab. Sure. You should have the, the education and we, we recommend that. But again, if you want to work in that lab, if you want to have the skills to, to work under somebody that has the knowledge they can share with you, you know, we can teach you and there's resources online to, to learn. And we were classes are, are a decent price too. Like they're, they're not super expensive or unaffordable at all. That's, I'd say I thought that was really awesome. Like, yeah, I mean, uh, people I spend hope, I mean, a it's hundred dollars on a pack of seeds though. Like, so yeah. like, you know, $400 on a, on a basic, you know, entrance thing mm -hmm. is, isn't bad at all. That's two packs of seeds for most people. Yeah. Teach you know it on a fish, right? Yeah, you exactly. can, you can spend four or $500 every couple months or couple years on seeds or spend your time and money on pheno hunting or yeah. spend the time and effort of cleaning up a problem or you can invest in the knowledge and let that knowledge, knowledge pay for so itself yeah. knowledge is the most valuable thing and Absolutely. especially with tissue culture knowledge you, the companies that employ it have a cutting edge now yeah they have the first movers advantage because they're optimizing the way they grow which is enabling them to invest more in better equipment better processes better products um, so use it as an advantage, take advantage of the fact that the information is out there. Now there's no excuse, whether it's our classes, videos online, tons of education, there's blogs, there's, there's an unlimited wealth of resources and yeah. start looking, right. Start reading, start asking questions. You can reach out to us, come to one of our classes. Uh, hopefully we'll do some more shows in the next couple months or years. We're not going to MJ BizCon this year, but um, I'd say I, we we'll probably end up at Spanibus. I love Spanibus. Oh yeah, yeah. I the Europeans loved it. But yeah, there, it sounds like a blast out there. I mean, we set up the flow hood. We were doing synthetic seeds. We were doing demos. People were doing it themselves. I mean, they loved it. People ate yeah. it up. And yeah. then we also go to orchid shows. We go to flower shows. We're we're involved in you know other industries as well, of course. Um, so yeah, don't be shy to to reach out. And if we can help you, we're here to do it. Yeah. That's our goal. You know, it's funny. It's like most of our audience probably would never go to MJ BizCon or, or, I mean, cause the, the, the corporate market kind of shook out all of the traditional yeah. market already. They've already run through the guys and used yeah. them, got the, whatever they needed, whether it was, you know, learning how to do this and that or using them for their connections or whatever. So most people don't yeah. even go to that anymore. We used to all go to um, the Emerald Cup each year. Yeah, but I've heard a lot it, about the Emerald Cup. It used to be the Wild West where like, you know, like we'd go and make a year's worth of sales in a night or a weekend, you wild. know, it was wild, it was awesome. And then eventually they're like, all of you need licenses. And then all of us were like, ah, oh, crap. And so then there was like one seed bank there that was borrowing someone's license that sold one year. And then after that, it was just done. Like, it's a shame because there's not, there's nothing else. Commercialization. Like yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's a realistic thing that's going to happen. And we yeah. always knew it was going to happen, but um, watching watching how it's changed and and who the big players are and the passion that they didn't come with for the most part. I mean, I'm sure there are is one or two, but like I don't know, like not without naming anyone. There's a lot of major the the major cannabis corporations, and it's like just been one major pushback. Like you're killing all of the genetics. And every, everyone's passion for breeding by constantly letting the, the the market force cookies down our throat under a thousand different names. And that's what that's kind of where I'm at with it. Like when I see anything runch gelato, cookies, sherb, it's all mm -hmm. like the same expressions of everything melded with different names. And, mm -hmm. and and that's kind of where breeding's gone. So yeah, a lot of our, totally. our mission has been to get people interested in other stuff that isn't like yeah. talked about by rappers per se, you know, yeah. or like, yeah, but it's hard. It's hard. It's, it's, it's hard because we don't have the, um, the marketing expense that like, Hey, give this rapper $75,000 to rap about this, this strain, 
you know? Yeah. And that's the real way to do it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's marrying a lot of different worlds that probably never would have originally met and nobody expected to meet, you know? I mean, what I'd say to that too, though, is what sets you apart from those big commercial grows? It's, it's your genetics, right? Yeah. yeah. You have, you have Budweiser, but you still have microbreweries. Yeah. Microbreweries of anything have continued to grow. And I think eventually, maybe not, but my hunch is that you'll have these big growers that sell kind of dirt weed and, you know, low quality product. And then you'll have, you know, very niche and unique strains that can only be obtained from some of the best breeders. So to those breeders and, and to the world that is getting pushed out via commercialization, those genetics, that's, that's your, that's your ticket. Yeah. And, you know, your library, your, your passion for finding the, you know, unique expressions. I think that's how you can differentiate because a, a lot of these guys that are entering the space that are large commercial, they're, they're buying out. They don't, they don't know what they're talking about. No. And it, and it is, this is a quick turnover for money. Usually in most yeah. of these things, they want to get in, get out, make money, get out. So and protect your it. genetics is, is, yeah. is the, is the moral of the story is the moral it, exactly. of the interviews. Exactly. Exactly. Please, please, please make sure your genetics stay alive because you spent time, you spent money, you spent years or months um, investing in in identifying them and growing them. So keep them safe yeah. and use tissue culture to keep them safe. <laughs> you know, after this interview um, airs, I'm sure I'm going to have a lot more questions. I have some here, but totally. they, would, they would run us into like two hours. So uh, sure. I'll probably bother you again for some more please time. Please do. So we can run through this and like, yeah, because there's questions about ploidy and all, all this other stuff that people want to know using tissue yeah. culture and assessing it. Absolutely. So, Let's do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, this has been an absolute pleasure and and it's it's data heavy, but that's what I wanted. So that's what that's what people need. And I think that's what people Absolutely. want. And they'll be able to watch this over and over and over. Um, that's the hope. And yeah. we're just going to continue the conversation. So questions are, are encouraged. Um, as I said, there's plenty of resources too, like if you have basic questions or more advanced questions, we either have it already answered. You can just literally search on our blog for it, or um, we can touch base and I can, you know, I can share some answers as well. So like, please, you know, we're, we're, that's what we're here for. Well, and I, I, we're, we're happy to talk. I, and I want to appreciate, uh, say, I appreciate you guys for, for making yourself so available. Like we had to reschedule this like two or three times. I was busy knocking it's myself nothing. out, spinning around no my house. Yeah. yeah. So I appreciate it's, it. And I'm glad we got to turn it out. Yeah, no, you asked some great questions. I mean, I love that you came to one of our webinars and here we are. So that's the yeah, beauty of this community. And uh, hopefully we can just keep it going and, and teach teach and share this knowledge with as many people as possible. I'm the type of person, like if I go and I see someone like someone doing a webinar on embryonic rescue, I know enough that I'm going to be like, are they doing it right or not? And then I'll say it exactly like, stop it, bullshit. And, and yeah. there was no bullshit. It, it just wasn't. Yeah. It was great. It was great. So I that's appreciate the idea. That. No bullshit here. <laughs> That's right. Well, I appreciate you. And uh, of course. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. And this will probably air Friday, so you know, and I'll, I'll let you know when and where. Awesome, man. To be continued right. and uh, looking yeah. forward to talking to you again. Thank you so much, Yoni. I'll All talk right. to you Bye. soon. Want to sit at the table with the syndicate? Check out our Patreon and our link tree or description below. Our merch site is officially live. We have all sorts of shirts, hoodies, and goodies to sort you out, and shipping is super fast, and most importantly, the quality is top-notch. I've been saving old designs for years for this purpose, so please check it out, syndicategear.com. We also have an underground syndicate discord where we get together and solve old strain history together daily. It's an amazing community of learning away from IG, and it's an amazing resource for old catalogs and knowledge. We hope you join our union of breeders and growers. Come check it out.